Do you remember her name? All yeah. forgotten? Yeah. You give me that all the feedback. I can't remember to the feedback or not. Long, long, long. Long time ago. Kepler's law. Captain. Not Captain, no. Who's Kepler? Kepler was before Newton. Before Newton. Long time ago. And then? And then, then what? He had three laws. <laughs> Just like Newton. As I said to the other physics students, if you want to be important in physics, you must have three laws. Yeah. Yeah. Um, see, Kirchhoff, he only has he only has two laws, so not many people know him. But if you have three laws, then you're famous. All right. So Kepler has three laws. So Kepler's first law states that bodies in orbit of the sun or other mar masses will move either in a circle or an ellipse. So, in fact, it doesn't have to be a circle. It can be this shape. This shape here is called an ellipse. It is a elliptical path. It's like, um, like a, a, a stretched out circle, you know, like pulled out. So, it doesn't have to be a circle. It could be this shape. Doesn't it uh, sometimes get hotter and colder? No, actually, not for Earth. It doesn't have too much effect on the temperature. Um, okay, so that's this word. Elliptical means this shape, okay? You should draw the picture to help you remember the word. Okay, you got this definition? No. Elliptical. Elliptical is the adjective. Ellipse is the noun. Okay, continue. Grace, continue. Yes. Yes, okay. So that's Kepler's first law. Easy law. Yes? Just moves. Just moves in a circle or an ellipse. This is a law. It is a law, yes. Unbelievable, I know. Okay. Kepler's second law. we will prove. Um, so we're going to prove Kepler's second law. So we have M and we have M and it's going around like this. Yeah. Um, so we have F equals G M M over R squared and F equals M omega squared R. We can make these equal. So we have G. Oh, ah, before I continue, this is the only. Uh, I think there's like uh, maybe. Uh, I think there's maybe two proofs on the exam. And this is the 
first of the two proofs. So in the exam, there's only two proofs they could ask you. This is one of the two, so you might want to make a note of that. Um, this proof may be in the exam. Okay, so g m m over r squared equals m omega squared r. So the m's cancel, and I can get g m equals omega squared r cubed. G m equals two pi over t squared r cubed. t squared equals 4 pi squared or cubed over g m. And this is Kepler's second law. Now you might say, oh, the proof is very easy. But remember, Kepler was before Newton. So Kepler didn't have this law, and Kepler didn't have this law. Because both of these laws are from Newton. And Kepler was before Newton. So it was more difficult for him to prove this or show this than it is for us. But this is our proof. It's not too difficult. Yeah. So Kepler's um, law helps you get the time if you know the radius and if you know the mass. So if you know the mass and the radius, then you can get the time. So it's uh, very useful. Uh, it should also note that it's used normally to find M. This is how it's normally used though. Yeah. Continue? Yeah. Now, um I well we'll do an example later. So this is it in words but really as an equation this is what you need. So I mean you don't have to write this down. This is Kepler's second law. It's an equation. Okay. Right, now lastly the proof is on the exam and oh yeah. So, because the proof is on the exam, it's not in the formula book. This is not in the formula book because the proof could be on the exam. Okay, continue. No, don't. Did you write the formula down? Not yet. We don't need a definition. This, this is it. Now you might ask, well, what do you do if the radius changes? And the answer is you just use the average radius. That's all. Okay. 
We shall prove it now, as we just did. Right, so Kepler's third law states that the area swept out by an orbiting body per unit time is constant. Uh, so there's... Let me just... Um, Yes? You got that? Now, let me explain that with a picture, what it means. Okay, so... Here is the sun. And here you are on Earth. So... The time is not important. I'll use months. So after one month, the Earth is here. This is after one month, okay? After another month, the Earth is here. This is another month. Then after another month, let me draw the lines in actually. The Earth is here, for example, and you know, well, it doesn't have to be the Earth, whatever. And then after another month, maybe the Earth is here. Now, what's happening is, even though it's only one month, here it moves more than um, here. And the reason is, Kepler's law says that the area stays the same. So this must be more because the radius is smaller, it needs to keep the area the same. So Kepler says that the area is always the same. So if you did per month, then the area per month is the same. Or if you did per day, the area per day is the same. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. So where is the planet moving fastest? Yeah, so here it's moving fastest. So here it's fastest. And where is it slowest? Over here. It's going slowest. This here? Fast, slow, less, more. Less distance. Do you understand Kepler's third law? Does it make sense? Yeah, Sophie? Yeah? Can I go back to the slide? Not yet? Go back? So, how do you say that as a formula? There's a few ways to say it, but for me the most useful way to say it as a formula is that um, V1 R1 equals V2 R2. So for example here, if this is going with V1 and this radius is R1, and here this is V2 and this is R2, V1 R1 is the same as um, V2 R2. So watch, if the radius gets um, bigger, what should happen to the velocity to keep it the same? It should be smaller. So if the radius is big, the velocity is small. Or for example, if the velocity was big, then the radius would need to be small. 
So this, this here, V1 R1 equals V2 R2, I think is the most useful way to say the law. It's mm, almost the area. I know what you mean. Um, um, it's uh, roughly the area, but it's not. It's not quite the area. Similar. Similar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but you see that it can't be the area because the units would be wrong. This would be meters squared per second. So it's like the area per second. Yeah, so it's um, area per second equals area per second. So it's nearly the area. So you can see here in my picture, this distance is bigger. It's going faster because the area here needs to be the same as the area is here. Let us prove the above result. Um, let's not. It's not on the exam. I don't need to prove it. Um, it's not on the exam. The proof is a little bit, little bit ugly. It's not my favourite proof. Okay. Right. More vocabulary. So this word geostationary orbit or parking orbit. Does anyone know what this means? These words, geostationary or parking? Yeah, hmm? yeah, you know orbit? Yeah. Good. What's orbit? Yeah. yeah, good. So what do you think parking orbit could be? Close. You're very close. But not, not quite. This is the Earth. Parking orbit means the time is 24 hours. It means it takes one day to go around. So if you're on the Earth here, how long does it take you to go around? 24 hours, right? Do you see what I'm saying? It looks like it's always in the same spot because if you take 24 hours to go around, and it takes 24 hours, it always looks like it's in the same spot in the sky. It, it's always above your head. Do you understand the idea? You look confused, right? The moon. No, the moon? No, no, the moon moves through the sky. Um, but a geostation parking orbit means that its time is also 24 hours. So it looks like it's not moving compared to you. Yeah. Now, does anybody know which satellites are in parking orbit? Well, actually, most satellites are. An example would be GPS. So, you all know GPS? Yeah. So the reason GPS are in parking orbit is so that the car when it sees the satellite, it knows where the satellite is and can calculate where the car is. So for example, if this is number... Yes? I'll try and draw this nicer. Let's say this is number 1 and this is number 2 and the time here is 24 hours. And let's say this is Ireland and this is the UK and the plane is here. If these are in parking orbits, it means it's always above Ireland and it's always above the UK, right? So the plane, if it sees the, the uh, satellite here and the satellite here, it knows that it's in the middle of Ireland and the UK. So it can calculate its position. So parking orbit is in very important for GPS. You don't want to draw this, do you? So it means that the time is one day. 
that's what it is. So the result of such an orbit is to make the satellite appear fixed in the sky. For Earth, of course, the time is 24 hours. Okay, you got this definition? Uh, geostationary or parking, yeah. Same. Same. Okay. Continue. Okay, so here's our first example. A small satellite is in a parking orbit around the Earth. How far is it from the surface of the Earth? The radius of the Earth is this, and the mass of the Earth is this. Okay, so... Okay, will we do this one now? Is that a yes? No, that's a no. So after I do these examples, we'll have a look at the um, lab books. Harreen, did you finish your lab journal? I think that's my dad. Ah, so that's a no, then. I finished it, but I want to look at some kids. My heart. No, My heart. Okay. Your problem is you have too many distractions outside of school. <laughs> or should I say you have one distraction outside of school? <laughs> Alright. Let's try this one. So, um, here is the Earth, and here is the satellite. What's this distance here? Six. What was it? Six. Uh, six three seven one. No way. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this distance here is what we want. I'll call it X. Now, here we can use Kepler's second law. T squared equals. 4 pi uh, squared over gm or cubed. Isn't that it? That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Which things do we know? Do we know the t? Do we know the time? Yeah, yeah we do. And do we know the mass? Yeah. yeah. And the radius? 
Well, no, the radius is actually all of this. No, we do, because I said it's in a parking oh. orbit. Yeah. So we can rearrange this. We can have g m t squared over 4 pi squared equals or, and I can cube root it. The time being is 24 or seconds. Seconds, yeah. So the radius will equal cube root 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, what's the mass? What's the mass, uh, Harin? Oh, uh, Earth, yeah. Uh, 5.97 yep. times 10 to the power 24. 24. And the time squared, uh, oh my goodness, what would it be? 24 hours times 3,600 seconds all over 4 pi squared. You got your calculator, so he? Mm -hmm. uh, put it here. And Harine, if you can do it as well, then we can have two right answers. Yes. No calculator. Where is your calculator? At home? Under, Under the desk. Under the desk? Beside your Batman comic? <laughs> yes. You have a Batman comic at home? No. No. Oh, okay. Oh, you do? Oh. I won't be too angry. You like Iron Man? Just because it's handsome. Okay, I guess that's okay. And rich. Yeah, that's okay. So is Batman? No, I mean in the movie. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. Not Batman? No. No. And uh, who else? Did you see Civil War? No. No. You want to see it? Yes. Civil War is out. Uh, hurry in. Yes. Civil War is out, isn't it? Uh, okay. Yeah. Have you? Did you see it? No, I didn't. no. Okay. You know, Iron Man, Captain America. They were fighting. They were fighting. Oh yeah. I see. You saw it. Yes. It's called Civil War. <laughs> Did you like it? So-so. Oh, only so-so? Yeah. Oh, okay. But my friend, she asked me, which team are you? I remember what it is. Oh, I'm Captain America. Oh, I'm the team of Captain America. If you are not, I have a problem with you. Okay. <laughs> Keep talking. And I said, no, no, no. I am the middle side. Oh, middle side. Very good. So, did you see it, Sophie? No. Okay. What answer did you get? Uh, four, two, 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 three, nine, one. Are you sure? Uh, I got the same one too. Yeah. Oh wait, hang on, sorry. Yeah, good. So this minus this can give me the x. So can you just type in minus six three seven one oh oh oh, and what do you get? Three five eight. Wait till then. Three five eight. Yep. Five five nine one zero. Three five eight five. Three five eight five six. Thirty five thousand kilometers. About thirty six. So that's very high. To be in a parking orbit, it's very high. I mean, how far away is China? 2,000, 3,000 kilometers? 
This is like 36,000 kilometers. How many times if I travel? I don't know, it must be like to China 10 times or something. I don't know how far. Do you know how far away South Korea is? Malaysia? Oh no, minus? You must have typed something in wrong. Oh, you typed it the wrong way. This is the total. And this is, yeah, this, sorry, this number here is from here to here. And this number here is from here to here. 10,894 uh, 10, kilometers. Is that far to China? So, 10,000 kilometers. Oh my goodness. So, it'd be like going to Malaysia four times. Mm. Okay, next one. Continue. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Can you write this one down? This is the last example. Now, um, wait. Just write down the A part and then write down the B and the C after I do the answer for A. I don't know. That's okay. That's okay. This one now. A and finish A, B. We'll do A, then do B, then do C. So just write down to A. Irene, did you watch any of the Euro games? Mm -hmm. No. Malaysia's not in it, so mm -hmm. why bother? Is, Mala is, Malaysia, is the Malaysian football team any good? I don't know. No. They're very good. Oh dear. What sport was Malaysia? Diving. Diving, yeah. Yeah, there's only one goal that's like really good. And we like fried up and badminton. I see. So kind of more indoor. Yeah. Yeah. Ireland's only really good at rugby. You know this game, don't you? Yeah. Actually, Ireland's very good at rugby because uh, it usually wins some, you know, small tournaments and things. What about South Korea? What would South Korea be good at for sports? Skating. Skating, yeah. Figure. Okay, oh, I, I know the one that goes around. Yeah, okay. And China. Ping pong. Ping yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Ping pong. Definitely not football. Definitely not football, yes. Basketball? Football. Yeah, basketball's okay. Yeah. Uh, people usually talk about sports in China. It's ping pong, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, badminton as well, yeah. Okay. I think um, Malaysia and China are the first and second like, best players. Really? Yeah. For badminton? Yeah, so, so it's always like the same people in the final. Yeah. <laughs> China and Malaysia, okay, I see. And, and who usually wins? Uh, it's very divided. 50 yeah. 50. Very equal, yeah. Oh, good. So it makes it interesting then. <laughs> okay, uh, what's the first thing? Alright, so, 
Um, what do we know? We know the distance and the time. So the distance is 228 million is it what's it? 228 million kilometers. So if you want, that's 228 times uh, 10 to the 9 meters. You sorry, I forgot to ask you. Do you know this planet, Mars? Do you yeah. know you know Mars? Okay. I know Mars year before that was okay. You were at Mars? <laughs> no, Mars year. Mars year? Oh, you know this? Yeah. Okay, okay. That's okay. I wrote it down. So what else do I tell you? The time is 687 days to go around. So the time is 687 days. Um, can you give this to me in seconds, please, Harine? And so he too, in case he's wrong. Uh, five nine three five. Five nine three five. Six eight zero zero. Okay. Seconds. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, what um, I can use Kepler's second law to get the mass of the sun. What's happening here? Here is the sun. And here is Mars, and we know the T, and we know the OR, which means we can know the mass of the Sun from Kepler's second law. Because Kepler's second law says T squared equals 4 pi squared over GM or cubed. So OR is cube root GM T squared over 4 pi squared. And we know the radius and we know the time. So, if you could... Oh, sorry! Abort! <laughs> I'm not looking for the R. So silly. What am I looking for? The mass. Sorry. So, Mass of sun, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Kepler's law, just to be clear, it's always the mass of what's in the center. Um, 4 pi squared or cubed over gt squared. Okay, and when you're ready, Harleen, change the answer here. So, um, once we get the answer, we'll write it down, and then we can do the B part if you want to write that question down. Um, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. So that is, let me see, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, three. Wait, are you sure? That seems very small to me. Check. Did you cube the radius?
I guess I can believe that. Should we trust him? <laughs> well, Harim, that's very simple, by Just type into Google Mass of Mars and it should be this. Can you just hit it in and see what you get? Okay. Oh, sorry, Mass of the Sun. What is he? 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11. Yeah, it's 1.989 times 10 to the power of 13. Okay, we believe him so. <laughs> right, part B is the velocity. Mm -hmm. So that's easy to calculate. We can use this formula from circular motion velocity of Mars. You can use this formula, if you remember, V equals omega or v equals, omega is 2 pi over t times r because remember t is 2 pi over omega and um, what was the radius uh, 228 times 10 to the 9 and the time was 5935 okay so this is the speed what do we get Omega or yeah. yeah. Circular motion, yeah. Now, uh, Sophie, the path is not a circle, but in the question I said you can approximate it as a circle. Uh, okay, what's the answer here? Um, 24,134.8. Okay, and the last part now. See? Okay, can we do it now? Philosophy just B. Now, so, um, if you look at my picture here, whoa, be careful. Oh. <laughs> here, I'll put it, I'll put it here. Here's Mars. Okay, so what, in the question, what did I say the radius was? Um, we calculated 228, was it? Or what was the distance? 
at the start. Uh, instead of that, is it two to eight million two hundred? So it's two to eight times ten to the nine, oh, wait, nine. meters, oh. wasn't it? Yeah. And what did we calculate is the velocity here? What was the previous answer? What did you say, was, Two four one three four five eight. Two four one three four three five three five meters per second. Mm -hmm. That's how fast it's going. But over here, will it be going faster or slower? Faster. faster. We don't know how fast. I'll call it v. But we do know the distance. What did I say it was? Two hundred and seven million. Oh, two hundred and seven. Okay, two hundred and seven times 10 to the 9. So we can say V1 and R1 should equal V2 R2. This is Kepler's third law, Kepler 3. So that's nice because that will cancel that. So we get V2 will equal 228 over 207 multiply 24135. What's that? Harin, and then it's finished. Hang on, let me move this over. And that's the answer. So it's going faster. And the um again the B one B one or one equals V two or two. Yeah. Continue. Well, homework. It's the last lesson in fields. Uh, oh. Look! <laughs> it's only one question. <laughs> Just number one, please. Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> No. Actually, you know what? You can't quite see with the. Let me. I'll, I'll hold it here. That's better. Wait, wait. It's shaking. Let me. Uh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Wait, just be patient. Give me one moment. There. That should be better. The NASA question. Very interesting. Okay, so what we can do for the last 15 minutes is um, I can have a look, and if you want, you can take out your laptop. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, let me think. Can I close this?